place. Clay is gonna be um, amazing with his Farsa in combination with Vin's um, Jawhead. And this is a classic combo that RQ always fielded in maybe what, three MPL seasons already? Yeah. Battle. It was so cerebral between Achille and James. So the battle itself, as we go into the land of dawn, should not disappoint. Let's see what happens here. RRQ takes on SMG in the first match of day four. Let's see what happens here as Achille and James, they've done their job. It is time for the players to do theirs. Let's get into the land of dawn. R7 on the Esmeralda. Going up against the Baksha, obviously not the matchup that you want, but at least R7 will have this Avarice up because of the fact that Baksha is melee anyways. You can see like the Joy just making sure that he will take out the grammar. So this is a steal from RQ Hoshi. Yeah, RQ already making moves here on the map. It is going to be the, the little Wanderer actually taken away by Win. Vin going in very aggressively, but wait a minute. It might be disastrous here for the side of RRQ. They've had to use that flicker early on. It is going to be a resource burnt away. They get the little Wanderer out of there, but it is still SMG right now leading in terms of that map pressure. And that's what you lose out on the Jawhead with. Uh, we, we saw this in um, the various MPL regions. If you're not not snowballing if you're not owning yeah. as the jawhead you kind of just need that one window and you're not going to get that window in the first two minutes of the game absolutely and now it is going to be smg trying to look for something in that bottom side this is what they like to do they play for that bottom side get sasa ahead is the name of this team right now but so far they are able to actually give him a lot of room zin still sitting under that turret yep in the first minute we saw that they had the uh, upper quarter in control now they're answering back and slowly i think this r rotation Ooh. will We'll go ahead and give the nod to SMG. Close one for Zaim Sempoy, though. They might walk into this. Expedia. Oh! Yeah, it's going to be actually the ejector coming in. Expedia still able to run away somehow with the guiding win and the flicker. But both teams still so, so close to one another. Albert has got two people low, but hasn't been able to execute that kill right now. First Blood is still on the table. So is the Turtle right there. Spawn already in the second minute going in right now. Not having the flicker onto two members of Team SMG. G will kind of bite them in the uh, and for this turtle take. I mean, not, not two flickers, but one purify and one flicker, and maybe now three. Yeah, R7 goes in for the spawning side one, and look at that! Albert goes in for the knockout strike. The combo start to come in, but the airstrike hasn't popped. Turtle being taken by Albert, as that is just a beautiful retribution. Albert, the baby alien, he's gonna go for more, but we will have to wait because the first blood is still up for grabs. I love it. Opening up with the R7 rendezvous. This is the way he plays the Esmeralda even early on. Doesn't even need the items. Just the fact that the kit of the hero plays so well to his style. It's what they need. It's what opened up the XP lane. It's what opened up the turtle. And I could have sworn Team SMG was going to get it. There was the Mountain Tracker to open up the team fight. Yeah. But in the end, Araki Hoshi, they placed Clay so properly. They placed Vin so properly. And now we're eating our words. The Absolutely. ejector is what they needed in that very moment. Can we talk a little bit about that retribution by Albert? Because it looked like, man, yeah. SMG had the control. Yeah, definitely. The, I would say the composure coming out from Albert. I mean, he's done it so many times. And this is a land setup as well. F3, oh, look at that! Finn goes in for the wow. combination and the prediction. First blood, as you can already hear the screams from all RQ. That's your Razor, first blood. I could have sworn that he might be even faster than yeah. what TMC, Team SMG had to react to. I mean, he was way ahead, maybe three steps ahead of that. Using the ultimate first, the unstoppable force, he knows that the flicker Ooh. will come in and even through the turret, uh, Agro. He went in. Absolutely. Albert already you, uh, forcing Zaim Senpoi exactly. to use that black shoe. Just pure aggression. This is our RQ Hoshi's playstyle. All they want to do is keep banging on your door. And certainly, this is what they're doing. I'd suggest for Team SMG, if they're feeling that there's like too much pressure and they're not ready to take fights yet, play to that strength. Get away from it. Use Expedia oh. to face check. Use the Mount Shocker defensively. Because if not, they're going to keep walking into Vin. They're going to keep walking into R7. And right now, this is step one. Smooth, isolate R7. Smooth, go ahead, do some face checking yourself. Use that box to roll out Unite and make sure that there's nobody lurking. Nobody making Win's life difficult. 
And the one thing that Team SMB can hold on for this early game, the one thing they can say that's good is Sasa hasn't died yet. Sasa could, it could have been so, so disastrous for Sasa if Vin just keep pulling those Ultra Instinct ejectors, because they don't even need to use the flicker. Yeah, but you can see the setup from RRQ. They are a completely different beast to what we saw from Season 8, from MPLI. Usually, they're just going guns blazing. They don't really think much of what they're doing. They rely on their mechanics, but they have fixed all of Blue those mistakes. You can turtle. see the turtle. Second turtle being picked up. Nothing lost at all. They will be able to trade the bottom side, but look at that. It's going to be win. No, in his own jungle. Gets invaded, and Albert comes in for the kill. Smooth now trying to recover for his team, but RRQ, they simply have too much power, too much sustain and too much damage in that top side as Finn goes in for the onslaught force on the backside. Ejector comes in as well. Sasa is gonna go falling down, but wait a minute, he's going to go and outplay Sin and Finn. Sasa, what the heck was that? The man? Rock Sasa has shown himself. He falls just almost immediately, but still the outplay that very one, Ooh. that moment, that oh. moment. Oh. That was amazing, but however, RQ will still get oh. more. So they want to go for XPD at this time, but Albert might bit him off more than he could chew. He's really taking advantage of this turtle buff, but which is, by the way, super underrated on the jungler Paquito. With so much burst and nooks from the physical department that you can get from the Paquito, it is even more amplified with that bonus that you get out of the turtle. But look at that, Sasa flickering in forward and gets the entangle oh. as well. My God. What a series of events for SMG, however, it was put a, put a stop by Clay. Honestly, that was beautiful there, man. He played with the vision. He went into that bush, but Expedia now, he's going to go use Circle Eagle, but it's actually going to be Zin bringing them back onto the turret, and Expedia will lose a lot of HP. This is the time for Araki Hoshi to maybe look for something in that top side. You can see that they did the switch now. R7 and Smooth down on bottom. They understand that for Sasa to get some farm, you need to switch it up. You need to give the firepower over here to Team SMG to try to get at least one more turtle for SMG before we go into Lord Timers. And the thing is, Expedia shouldn't have done that. I think that was very risky. They just made the call at the last moment to say, okay, Vin might be here. And there he is indeed, actually. Yeah, Expedia gets caught out right there. There's already two ultimates being burnt down for the side of RRQ as SMG. They might look to collapse, but look at the damage oh, coming fuck. in. Albert completely just removes Zyam Senpo out of the game. And Sasa's next. Albert, the baby alien. He's looking for the triple kill. Goes in under turret to pick it up. Oh my god. SMG, oh. there's nowhere to go. Maniac for the baby alien. Holy. Albert is putting a show, and we've used this term before. This is a seminar. This is a clinic. We are seeing Albert showing how it's not even just the efficiency of, of how he was able to use his skills. The combo is just too good. The way that every single choice of skill that he thrown in that specific skirmish it's was perfect. phenomenal. It's perfect. Like this three combo finish against Zai Senpoi and then he waits for another uh, refresh of his skills and then eventually takes out Clint. Such a perfect execution from the Paquito and I'm sure that will go down to the textbook on how to play the Paquito. It's part of the scramble. I think uh, Team SMG, they already kind of got off tempo when they started that call and say, okay, underneath the turret, we're going to try to get a circling eagle down. And they kind of felt a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of ganker's remorse, if, if I may put it that way. And that's what opened them up to that quick take up top, a maniac for the baby alien. And now they're scrambling. Again, one more time, R7 here. He's comfortable, more than comfortable to take his fight. He's in a 1v3 and he doesn't care. He's not taking any damage right there. Sasa will be able to pick up an objective on the board in that top side but still R7 with this pressure I do want to go back roll it back again to that replay man because you saw Albert he was actually caught in that sandwich yep. the decision making and the shot selection by him was just beautiful they had Real. all the kit they they, they, yeah. they they knew exactly where they were they knew how to engage they had their perfect targeting the fact that Sasa went down second in that row of four if a 2K you took down the Clint, then you're all good. You're, you're, you're good in the hood, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> you're good in the hood, Maybe. absolutely. But this is what I wanted to see from RRQ. This is the Indonesian aggression that we all love and we all know. From yesterday, we've seen a lot of macro plays. Crazy this, yeah. crazy that, oh! but we haven't seen this. Look at that. It's no! just RRQ going to town. Zin picks up the kill, and SMG are forced to back away again. Man. This is a more refined version of that aggression. I took note of 
the way that they performed in MPL, the way that they did in the Invitational, and they seem to want to pick fights and mm -hmm. then convert. Now it seems like they're thinking two steps ahead. Maybe we can convert into this, but where do we find the fights? And that's what's happening with RQ Hoshi this time around. They're not even looking for the people. The dudes just come to them. The bodies just come to them right in the way of their steam rolling pattern. And right now they're ahead. Ooh. Two turrets. R7 just again going 3v1. Yeah, you can see. Honestly, when we take a look at the items, because usually it... Oh my god, this is RRQ, man. Nothing. They split up the map, they can do it. You want to go for team fights? We can do it. And R7 once again zoning off the members, flickering Nothing. forward, and he's looking for the 2v1. Look at the way he's buying the time for RRQ members to walk up to the top side and all of that while doing the setup to go and siege. You get nothing, sir. Looking at the gold here, R7 is at 6k. Win is at 4. He's oh. ahead by two over the opponent's jungler. And, and that's just what happened here, forcing SME to switch around. We already saw Sasa go from top to bottom, bottom to top. And looking at his farm right now, it's at 6K. R7's still ahead of that. Oh my destroyed. goodness, the way they played this game has been perfect so far. Look at the waves crashing in at the exact same time as that is all the tier two and turrets taken off the board. You can see from the face cans right now. Oh, Man, oh my God, just to put the salt on the wound, you get another pick off, and the Feather Air Strike will be able to take Sasa to very deep waters. All right, here are gonna go in for his oh time, lands on a three, and they're just styling at this point. They don't need to be able to make these plays anymore. All they need is four of those inhibitors, oh. but Zin goes in once again, using that torn apart memory to deal some damage as Albert, he is not going to be punished at all. At this point, I'm not even questioning why it's Zin and not uh, Skylar, because mm -hmm. you don't need mechanics at this point. You yeah. just need that killer instinct. You just need that grit. You need that experience to understand that it's the Albert show this time around. We're setting him up. Clay's gonna make him soft and Albert's gonna knock him all down. Four in a row earlier already. And looking at the gold lead, 10K in 11 minutes. Oh, 10K, man. where does Team SMG even go from here? Oh, you know, you see Vin is 5.3K. That is the Rome, the position five, the least priority. And look at Win. Look at 5.7k. The difference between the jungler of the enemy and the rover mm -hmm. of RRQ is just 300 gold, and that spells doom for Team SMG. That is insane. If you look at it, 11 minutes and you're able to build this much of a goal lead already, only losing one turret, by the way. There's too much on the back of the lone cowboy here. I know that one key for Team SMG to get back is to make Sasa a threat, mm -hmm. to give Sasa a chance to hit those free hits and then get the burst on to Clay or even Sin. But it's just too hard, it's too much. It, it, it might just break the camel's back. Yeah, you can see the positioning as well from the side of RRQ, man. They played really, really smart. They know that they are, like, they freeze the waves, right? And they put someone in their bushes in the enemy jungle, waiting for someone to just overstep a bit. You can see though, SMG, they know how to do this. You saw that whoever gets caught, usually it is mostly Expedia. With four deaths, he is doing what a Roman should do in a losing match. You can see Sasa, the only hero that has a kill inside the team SMG. And that was a double kill that he had to really put up all the stops. Even just, you know, Flicker is trying to outbrain RQ Hoshi, but then eventually gets taken out by Clay. What I'm trying to say is that RQ Hoshi, they're not in it for just solo kills or solo chains. They Ooh. always will try to win the trade off. Whenever it is like a kill, they will try to get a turret from the other part of the map, or maybe get a, an exit frag, as we call it, from the <laughs> from uh, our FPS game. And that's what I was saying. They're thinking two steps ahead. It's not the yeah. same old RRQ Hoshi, not the king of kings that are just bloodthirsty, all puns intended. They actually want to conquer this time around, and they're thinking, do we attack it in a political manner? Do we play the mind games? Do we circle around and try to, again, camp in their bush and try to bait out these free pickoffs so Lord is more open? But right now, Team SMG looking at the scoreboard. Ladies and gentlemen, 11k ahead. 11k oh. ahead. It just refreshed. Nine kills ahead. Six turrets in. A lord above. There has got to be some sort of mental toll. Some morale depravity that Team SMG is under right now. And look at this. Yeah, You can't take that one. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. And Vin goes in for the backside. Going and can be able to get it. But look at the damage coming from Albert. He actually dives all the way to the backside. Going for the knockoff. Right? able to get two right now. But the damage oh! will not be enough. R7 comes in for the follow-up. And that's all they need. It's the setup they need for the Enhanced Lord. They have used a lot. They back SMG up. And now it's time for the Lord.
At this point, I think that's fair. They, 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 they ate so many ults from Team SMG, forced them out. No kills for sure. RQ Hoshi kept their battle spells in check. And all this did was open up the map more, make it a little more blue, and make this Luminous Lord all the more free. Now the question is, are they waiting to choke out this purple? Are they waiting for it to scale at 15? Or are they going to go for it and bait out another team fight Team SMG's not ready for? That's the thing, right? RQ Hoshi, all of their heroes have low cooldown ultimates. Maybe the longest cooldown might come from Vin's jawhead, but that's that's not even long at this point, so they can good teams, they fight. Oh my god, they get enhanced, Lord Vin goes in, and that's gonna be win instantly just shot down. Legendary picked up right now, the Feather Airstrike comes in to go to do more damage to the backside. Albert going in for the double kill, he's looking for another Maniac, boys. He's gonna get the triple kill. Is it a double Maniac? It is not going to be just yet, but Albert, he does it again. The baby alien, the young lord, whatever you call him, the king of kings, have come to play. They're so cool. Clean. Two Maniacs for Albert in the first game of the day. A Maniac twice over. What? what a performance. What an opener. What an opener indeed. And we saw how he was able to just use the Paquito in the late stages of the game.